without me, you're just a joke without a punchline. And I want to be the star of the show! Welcome to Legends of Gotham, where we talk about Fox's hit series Gotham, set in the world of Batman. I'm Bill Meeks. And I'm Amber Andy Simone. And you're talking very, very high-pitched uh, right now, uh, Anne Marie. I, I, you know, I'm Lucy. I want to be in the show. That's fair. Come on, That's... Rickley. Rickley? 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 Rickley Ricardo. Uh, anyway, welcome to Legends of Gotham. Cheers. We're, we're back here Sunday night, 9 p.m. EST at Facebook.com slash Legends of Gotham. You, can, you also might be checking this out on YouTube after the fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might be sitting in this room over here and taping us, and you're going to watch that recording later. Uh, we heard some noises over there earlier, so, you know, we might have an invader. I think it's just a snake. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, hey, how, how you doing, Anne-Marie? I'm doing lovely. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good too. I'm doing good too. I don't have any one. I have, I, I, and I that's have where H2O. you went wrong with your life. I have some patented, really bad CGI green gunk from one of the vats. See, and it looks like mine is green. I've got some ace chemical. Yeah, we're not getting into the episode discussion yet, but the CGI on the, the bubbly chemically stuff was fantastic. Was fantastic? Fantastically awesome. I thought it was fantastically bad. But. See, I enjoy it because, I, you know, that was just like the one dollar they couldn't spend. <laughs> <laughs> they have had to do a lot of like green screens and backdrops and things. So nice, nice. Well, we have a lot to talk about tonight. Big, big episode. Are very, you sure? Ace Chemicals? I mean, that's not important. Very divisive episode. Yeah. I saw. I saw on the interwebs. Uh, the you know. Interwebs. I, and I, I think I might have pinpointed the reason why, but we'll get into all that in just a minute. But before we do that, Anne-Marie, uh, why don't you go ahead and hit us up with the rhyming Ridley episode summary. Where has Alfred Pennyworth gone? He's back in the mansion, a buttling pawn. Will Bruce survive another night at the cinema? Jeremiah gives his grief a much-needed enema. Is Barbara pregnant? Yes, but who's asking? Who's left in Gotham to suffer Jay's gassing? He looks like the Joker, but should we remain skeptical? Who else could fall into a vat of ace chemicals? Ace chemicals. Not acne. Ace chemicals. Ace chemicals. Anne-Marie, what'd you think? Okay, so we have been looking forward to this episode for only Mm -hmm. five seasons. Yeah. Um, I think we might have, it was either on the show or right before the show last week, we were basically like, in our mind, this is the finale and anything else is just bonus. Pretty much. But no. (laughs) <laughs> um, I don't think we had enough of the ace chemicals part of it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it was like, da, 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 blip, 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 done. I'm like, what, what? <laughs> what, what happened? Where did it go? So, but we yeah. know Barbara's pregnant for sure. Cause she confirmed it like 17 times in this episode. All Barbara talks about is being pregnant now. <laughs> like it's going to be a long nine months for this whole situation <laughs> to go on. Nice. Okay. So what did you think, though? What did I think? Yeah. Um, I think I had basically the same re- Ver- reasoning as you. Um, you know, I th- I thought that all the Jeremiah Bruce stuff was practically perfect it in was every practically way. Practically perfect in every way. I absolutely. I th- I thought it was very strong, very comic booky, and I you know I'll get into this more as we talk through the episode and everything. Obviously. But I I feel like there were some a couple things that could have been cut that would have made it a little tighter and maybe given a little bit more room for the Jeremiah Bruce stuff. Fact. 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 Okay, but I'll go ahead and uh, get started with my first point, which I've titled The Mark of Joker. Um, And uh, this is kind of getting into, it's not the whole uh, Joker scenario thing, but I really wanted to focus in on that movie uh, he he created for Bruce. Right uh, now, somebody who has loved Zorro as a character as long as he's loved Batman, or almost as long as he's loved Batman, it was such a treat to see Jeremiah portray the fox himself. If you didn't know, El Zorro means fox or the. Fox. I had no idea to be honest. So with now you know. Yeah. Um, as popularized in the Dark Knight Returns comic book uh, from way back in the day, way back eighties uh, or something, uh, the Mark of Zorro is usually the moose. The moose, the moose, <laughs> the moose that Bruce was seeing, <laughs> the movie that Bruce was seeing <laughs> with his parents the night they were murdered. Oh, sorry. I also the moose uh, they were seeing. Moose. Um, sorry. So uh, you know, it, it it comes from the fact that Bob Kane was very much inspired by a movie called The Mark of Zorro, uh, which is parodied by Jeremiah in this episode. Yes. Is as far as his inspiration for the character, Amory. Let me uh, run something by you. See if this sounds familiar. Okay, a rich playboy 
uh, kind of pretends to be weak and ineffectual, but at night he puts on a black mask and goes out on a very fast traveling device to fight crime. Who's who does that I, sound like? Spider Man. No, no, absolutely not Spider Man. He had the spider car back in the seventies, but they got rid of okay, that. Okay, not Spider Man. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Wonder Woman. No, no, I, she flies in an invisible jet. She does not wear a mask either. I don't know. You don't know? Uh, well, I was I was trying to draw a parallel between... Oh, Batman! Batman! Batman <laughs> and Zorro. Because uh, uh, Zorro, uh, it, in all versions of Zorro, uh, he goes by Don Diego de la Vega, and he's this rich playboy who lives in the uh, Spanish uh, Pueblo of Los Angeles. And... <laughs> <laughs> but you know and he basically you know he pretends to be weak and ineffectual and oh i don't know how to fight with a sword or anything know. like that to mask the fact that he goes out every night and fights crime as mm -hmm. his uh you know alter ego zorro or right. batman but bruce wayne kind of does the same thing he does like the playboy like i'm a party guy you know you know to be fair the playboy thing only lasted about six or Six months for Bruce so far. Yeah, but I, I, it'll come back later, I'm sure. You I'm know. sure, as Selena continues to break his heart <laughs> every freaking episode. But yeah, Sorry, and, sorry, not better. So that's really why the character of Zorro and Batman are so intertwined is because Bob Kane took a lot of inspiration from Zorro when creating Batman because Zorro was one of the first big action-y kind of movies that came out back okay. in the day. Uh Oh, go ahead. I was just going to throw in some stuff we have over in the comments. Jennifer says they've wasted too much time with the Bane storyline instead of spending it on characters we already know and care about. Maybe, but I'm pretty sure, what was it the next episode or a couple episodes? It's called I Am Bane or something yeah. like that. So I he's coming back. Um, and then Soledad says, I agree with Anne-Marie, and that's really all that matters. No, um, <laughs> the Ace we'll Chemicals there. part was way too short. Oh, and we're getting more. Bobby, I think the I think we still have the after aftermath of Ace. Apparently, neither of us can talk of Ace Chemicals. Obviously, there's some aftermath. He's all wrapped up in bandages. Well, we have to deal with the moose still for sure. Yes, the moose. Um, and Jennifer says, I sincerely love this show. Um, with that, I found this season disappointing. If they continued to work with the characters they had, there were plenty. Don't need Bane. Lots of exclamation marks. It sounds like you. Yeah, like uh, he hates Bane. Bane, Bane definitely feels <laughs> like, like a bit of a tack on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in this situation, like, don't get me wrong, I like Bane in the story Nightfall, which was kind of his big, big first big story, because uh, he was a minor character. The Venom uh, chemical was a thing in Batman comics for a few years, but it was Nightfall that really kind of brought it out there and uh, yeah. kind of showed what he can do. And, and since then, he hasn't been quite as interesting. You know, but I, I think in the show, um, I, yeah, I definitely think they've given too much air to the Bane storyline. Although there really wasn't that much in this episode. There was nothing in this episode. Yeah, other, except the, he was mentioned in passing. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. I just wanted to make sure we got to those. But anyway, back to this movie thing. Back um, to this movie thing. The, the whole setup reminded me of a Batman, uh, the animated series plot, like Christmas with the Joker, if you're familiar with that episode, where the Joker enacts a hugely complicated theatrical plan, plan to win the approval of Batman. Or sometimes just to kill some people, because, you know, and that's fun. what the Joker does. Yes. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, Jeremiah, the Joker, uh, wants to be the star of the show and the central I figure. I want to be the star of the show. I'm going to do it all night. Get That's, used fair. To it, everyone. That's fair. But, you know, he wants to be the central figure in Bruce Wayne's life. Uh, it, it's an ego gone mad, and it's personified perfectly in the broad theatrics of early cinema that you see in movies like The Mark of Zorro, because uh, Jeremy Maya is making a big play here, a big theatrical play for, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and say the affection of Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he is. And uh, I, I think, uh, you know, it, it's very much in keeping with that big, broad acting that you would see in early movies like The Mark of Zorro. Uh, Peter Price says, good point, Bill, about Bob Kane and Zorro. Yet remember, it was Bill Finger that made up the true look and most of the characters of Batman. Fair enough. You getting called out. Well, you know, there's there's been a big controversy about Bob Kane uh, and Bill Finger. It's kind of like the same thing that happens with like Jack Kirby and Stan Lee with the Marvel stuff. Like who created uh, this? Who created that? Bill Finger did create a lot. Like he he's responsible for Robin. He might be responsible for the Joker. Interesting. But you know, Bob Kane had a little bit of juice they, in there. They too. all have their fingers <laughs> in the in the in the mix. 
But, you know, again, this whole Zorro setup, uh, I, I saw it in the, the big, long green band trailer they did for this episode a couple weeks ago, and it just made me geek out so much. I just loved it so, love so much. When those guys stumble out at the beginning of the episode with really disease good. in their chest, yeah. and, and Bullock is like, was it Zaz? I know. I'm like... <laughs> Zaz's mode he just goes bang bang <laughs> he draws he cuts himself yeah he doesn't yeah cut he doesn't cut other people right usually usually he'll kill them are we on to me with a gun yeah oh okay <laughs> like, is that it? i'm just like checking okay doc Tompkins is back in business she is she is back in business so it's really nice to see her back working the war taking care of the people uh-huh. versus being in the queen of the narrows because that was always a just a little bit weird. Uh-huh. I liked it because I found Dr. Tompkins quite boring. However, <laughs> this time I have issues with it. Um, she she does just feel more natural there. Um, it's also hilarious that Babs goes to her to be her OB. <laughs> You've tried to kill her, Babs. But you know Gotham's B Y O B. No. Be my OB. No. Be my OB. Shh. No. Um but it's kind of funny that she sort of acts like she can't, she doesn't want to, like that she has the choice. There's kind of this thing, it's like a doctor's code where you take care of the patient in front of you. Uh-huh. You don't get to choose who you take care of. And if you're the most qualified person to be her OB, even though she's clearly not an OB, uh, <laughs> you do it. Yeah. And I think that- It's the Hippocratic Oath. It is. And I think you could see that when she was like- your first appointment's next week. Get your vitamins from the nurse. I'm like, because the nurse is just going to be like, oh, yes, we have some prenatal. So bring it. That's just weird. Although I'm pretty sure with the current state that Gotham's in, there's not going to be any medical boards or anything like no, that. Like, no, but I'm saying, like, how do they still have any sort of medication or food <laughs> is where I'm really going with that. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, I, I guess, you know, all, all those gains in the narrows and thereabouts, like they wouldn't be stealing you, prenatal vitamins to snort or something like that, you know? Yeah, The I prenatal vi- vitamins and the Flintstones chewable. No, Zaz likes those. Never mind. <laughs> the, the prenatal vitamins would be probably pretty safe to stick right. around for a while. Um, let's see. Um, I really hope we get more interactions with the two throughout the pregnancy because that's just going to be freaking hilarious um and i love bill's theory that i don't remember if we talked about on the show or just like in our life Uh um about something happening to babs during childbirth Mm -hmm. and jim has to take care of the baby becoming you know a single dad and making a lot more sense for the baby's name to be barbara gordon yeah and her whole batgirl thing Mm -hmm. yeah i don't think we brought that up on the show that was kind of good there you go hi so here's bill's theory yeah (laughs) That's kind of what I was thinking was that, you know, it's some, yeah. somehow Barbara's going to die during childbirth or she's going to have the baby and get out of jo- Dodge or something like that. See, and I kind of see they kind of almost hinted at that when she's like, what, you don't mm-hmm. think I'm going to be a good mom? He's like, well, no, not really. And I kind of think, you know, the fact that she couldn't shoot Penguin. <laughs> I kind of think nice. it's weird that she's so resistant to Jim helping out with the baby. At this point, she is a strong female and she wants to do it all herself. Then again, also the last time they were like Together. involved in a long relationship, like that's when she started getting damaged because, you know, someone came looking for Jim and ended up taking her instead or whatever. Yeah. So I can see that fear being there. It was M- Maroney. Maroney? Or was it Falcone? I think it was Maroney. Was it Maroney? Yeah. Um, we have a few over things over here. Uh, let's see. Jennifer says, Bane is fine. You have less than 12 hours of show. That said, move on with all the characters. Using the No Man's Land concept is fun. So go from there. Ah, don't go back. Um, I believe they had great characters to work. And there it went. Um, they had characters to work with. I missed the rest of it. Uh, I was watching the first episode of the season again, and I noticed that I don't think we saw Barbara. Oh, goodness. They're all talking now. Um, wait, we don't even know the gender of the baby yet. No, we don't, but heh. Uh, problem <laughs> is we no longer have Sarah Essen. True story. We were talking about that. Yeah, we that. were just talking about Sarah Essen before the show started. Um, and Maria's dead on with Barbara and Lee. OBGYN and vitamins, they've only got a few hours left. She better get on with that baby. The time jump is going to have to be big. Okay, yeah. going with that. Time jump. Oh, my God. They're all talking this week. You guys are never in there that much, um, which is awesome. Um, does anybody know what day we're at <laughs> in yeah, the show? As far as, like, you know, the first day uh, like, episode The was, first episode we came back was... Day 37. No, or so, 300. Or 300. It was, like, it was like almost exactly a year. Yeah. It was around <laughs> a year. 
And I don't know where we are. In I mean, we're over 100 because we're at least like three months into the start. Is I'm just trying to figure out where we are in all reality because of this pregnancy. <laughs> I want to know like where this is all going to go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, back, back to Lee for a minute. Okay. Like, like I thought it was interesting. This episode, she felt more like season one Lee than she has in forever. Yes. Like, uh, yes. You know, she, we had like the tough sort of boss of the Narrows Lee right. uh, last season. And I, I don't know, whatever happened with her and Strange and Ed and all that, whatever they did to her brain, it must have somehow removed that kind of crazy switch that flipped when she first... For the, uh, the poisony stuff. When she got uh, exposed to the Tetch virus, Tetch remember? virus, yes. Yeah. I was like, I can't even remember. And that's when the, the downfall of Lee Tompkins kind of started. Right. Um, let's see, over, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Jennifer says months have passed. I knew months, but I wasn't exactly sure how many months we had. Uh, they're going to at least have to, last time jump, jump, whoa, they're going to have to give a last show time jump after we catch up. Truth. Uh, Bobby, I'm all for strong females, but I hate when they try to exclude the father. Yes. <laughs> Especially when it's a good guy most of the time. Kind Definitely. of. Who knows? Jim Gordon goes either way. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, but the the fact that there's a pregnancy in play, it almost makes me think we're going to get two time jumps. Like maybe the the like next to last episode or a couple episodes before oh, that. The or, next. I think after the next two episodes, we're going to have a time jump. Yeah. And then I to, think. To have the baby happen. And then there'll be the final time, 10 year time jump in the last episode. Oh, yes. Yes. After the next two episodes, I'm finally, I'm actually looking at like, the wiki. Yeah. <laughs> Because we have two episodes, and then I think we'll have a time jump before our buddy Bane comes back, and then I think we'll have two episodes, and then I think we'll have another time jump before the finale. Yeah. Based on these. Lots of time jumps. Lots of time jumping, Let's baby. do the time jump again. Let's do the time jump. Okay, I believe the season started at day 87, and cold open was day 300 and something. Yes. So I think we're around like 117, Yeah, you could, fit, you could basically, you know... No more than, you know, a few weeks have passed this season. In, in this, within the season. So you can fit an entire pregnancy in there, too. Like, to the day of the, totally the last stand of the Gothamites. For Gotham! <laughs> All right, now that I have taken over the conversation, tag, you're it. Okay, uh, tag, I'm it. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Sad Hatter. Uh, now, sad I, Hatter. you know, I... I was talking about how this episode seemed very divisive online. Mm -hmm. One of the big points of complaint I saw was people complaining about how little action the Mad Hatter saw in this episode. He was basically just there for a couple minutes and then he was gone and it wasn't any big deal. <gasps> but I thought it was good. Yeah, I have to give it up to the Mad Hatter's <laughs> inclusion in this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the comics and other media, the Hatter is pretty much always portrayed this way, a minor player in another villain's scheme. You know, he'll get the origin story maybe a follow-up story based on that. Mm -hmm. And then he's basically just there to do the mind control stuff for Joker, or Riddler, or Penguin, or all those other kinds of characters. Pause. Have the Graysons had Dick Grayson yet? We uh, don't know because we haven't seen him since season one, right? But she was pregnant then. So then, yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see. It's interesting the writers felt it important to add a baby instead of sticking with what people really wanted all along, Batman and Jeremiah. See, I think the, I think the baby's... In, um, important anyway continue i just didn't want them to it, fall off oh it's okay uh, <laughs> but uh it, it's great i think it's great that uh in the show they've addressed this aspect of the mad hatter this yes. fact that he's he's sort of a bit player in in the grand scheme of things in gotham uh both by how he was included and featured in this episode and how jim uses that aspect like you're just a you know a servant to jeremiah kind of thing mm -hmm. to try and get in the hatter's head there is like a tactic to get him and Lee out of the situation. Yeah. So it, it was like, you know, he he was presented very comics accurate in the show. And then the characters even call it out in the dialogue yeah. that, yeah, he's usually a bit player yeah. in, in these sorts of things. I also loved how uh, Jeremiah and Echo and Jervis Tetch, uh, the Mad Hatter, yeah. used Ace Chemicals as their base of operations. It was fantastic. Uh, and, and it just made so much sense uh, that they went back there because of that. Uh, I, I, I almost thought, you know, maybe Jeremiah didn't just run back to a safe location. He intentionally led Bruce there for some sort oh, of plot absolutely. that didn't come to be. Like, I was thinking... Well, maybe he was going to throw him in. 
exactly. My thought was if, if they don't confirm anything else about it through the rest of the episodes, my head cannon is going to be, he was bringing Bruce back there. Cause that's where they were creating all that Joker gas they were mm-hmm. launching. And he was going to try and Jokerify Bruce Wayne Ooh. to kind of make them connected. Like the, he was saying the entire episode he wanted to be with uh, Bruce connected, 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 if not through love then through hate. Yeah. It, but uh, speaking of that Joker grass, gas they uh, launched and uh that jim ended up driving into the river there at the end yeah i really hope that this means that we're going to get some joker fish uh is that the, like a thing it's a thing it's a thing. it's a thing like uh the the joker tends to take his joker venom and inject them into fish and and uses it as sort of a, an intimidation tactic like you know here's a thousand fish with my face on it kind mm. of thing oh, okay so i i if we don't see some joker fish wash up because of he put those chemicals in the yeah. water, I'm going to be really, really disappointed. I can appreciate it. But yeah, that. overall, Mad Hatter, very good. A little disturbing without the facial hair. Yes. I almost called this point the bald hatter because his face was bald. Ooh. But although he did look a lot more like his comic book counterpart. Yeah, but he's not the character that we have come to know and love. Yeah, very And true. obviously it's because he probably has to act in something else where he can't have his facial hair. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. The Wayne slash Jim Lee switch was the best they had to play this episode. That was really good. Oh, definitely. The, like that was beautiful. It, I, although I do have minor one minor criticism I'll get to later, but it, it definitely raised the stakes. Yes. Uh, but it wasn't joke gas. It was a form of aid based chemical or I don't know what that means. Here. Um, did Bruce fish Jeremiah out of that? See, that was the question I had. Yeah. Who fished him out of there? Who thought that anything could have lived? Yeah, yeah. I'd have just been like, well, I, I think I think done? Bruce said that him and Selena got him out of there or something. Maybe I could be wrong though. But but wouldn't they be like up to their arms and stuff? They just took like one of those big pool net shoes to clean the <laughs> bugs and stuff off. Acid based. Pool. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Acid based chemical. Well, Peter, uh, the the gas we saw uh, the, in acid based chemical. He's talking yeah. about the gas. The gas we saw in the beginning of the episode was definitely something along those lines, and it killed those guys, right? Right. But it was but, made in that same. Yeah, it was made facility. in that same thing. But we don't know that that gas was the same gas he was planning on launching out. Uh, at the yes. end, because it basically one they of were Jer- test subjects. Yeah. And, and one of Jeremiah's goals in the whole thing was to make Gotham seem unsafe. So, you know, the, they wouldn't get the, the calvary wouldn't arrive. Right. So, you know, making turning everyone into basically a version of Jeremiah. That would, would do it. Would definitely, that do, would it. definitely do it. Killing everybody in Gotham might not do it. They might be they, like, they OK, actually would appreciate that. We're OK. We're cleared out. We can go in and, you know, reclaim Clear. the area. Shh. Everyone's dead. Start over. Throw those bodies in the river. Move on. <laughs> okay. Selena. She is just apparently playing on a team all by herself, but with everyone. Um, mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a little weird. I have issues with her this season. Uh-huh. Um, so with Penguin, watching the test subjects in the little boats on the river was possibly the most adorable <laughs> thing I've ever seen. Um, because, and then it exploded. I'm like, did they really wait like four months for anybody to try and escape on a boat? I thought it was really cruel that not only did were the bridges blown out, but the government was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and put yes! landmines yes! all through the water when did they to kill do anybody that? who tries to leave. Like you're not, you can't, you can't leave. You can't leave. Um, like I feel like all of the boats in Gotham would have already tried like the next day, mm-hmm. maybe two days or so, um, to be able to leave like that, which would definitely be before they could plant the landmines or water mines or whatever. Yeah. Um, when did the government put the mines in the river? Yeah. Um, <laughs> finding the tunnel slash Alfred and discovering that it leads to the Wayne Manor. It would have been really interesting actually to see them go all the way through the tunnel before the explosion. Mm-hmm. I think that would have been way more entertaining. It wouldn't have worked. Oh, with and how like if they had run, worked. run into Bruce and Alfred no, down there, or? that they wouldn't have necessarily run into Bruce and Alfred. Mm-hmm. I just would like them to have had that realization. Like, whoa yeah okay we're here like because they both know it like well, it's not the, the thing is too that tunnel it, it's basically going to lead to the bigger broader nuclear reactor bat cave and so right. it would have been kind of cool to get those characters there before it becomes that because you know once it becomes that they really can't go there without blowing the whole batman game see and actually the fact that this goes into <laughs> um into wayne manor is actually really entertaining because shouldn't they be able to know by, you know, 
being outside of the cave uh-huh. that you know the general well, you know the general direction she already knew she knew where they were digging the cave yeah. she knew the general like mm-hmm. obviously you can like me under what or under the ground but to see that you know isn't Wayne Manor over there but you know th- think about and it is you Wayne know Manor on its own little island think about it like we go out outside this window yeah. we go stand out in the front yard here and i point this way yeah uh this way yeah um but you know there's a lot of things over there there's disney there's universal we live in orlando uh there's sea world oh that way yeah you get my point though that that, yeah in a bigger city yes wayne manor's over there but so are a million other things they were right up against like the river Mm -hmm. and like it should have been at least a general like i know there's a lot of things but they are in a closed off thing. Yeah. And if this is getting, because that also is my question, like is Wayne Manor on its own little island or is it, because why did we have to tunnel to it? No, I think it's just on the other side of the bridges. Okay. Because so, rich people but, live but, away from the normies. <laughs> but when you get over there, doesn't it, um, is it on the side with like other towns? Or do you have to cross yet another river and there's a, another bridge? This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, is it a legitimate way out? Mm-hmm. Well, I would imagine it would be like the same difference between, you know, think about all the, you know, late night talk show hosts that who do shows out of New York, like yeah. uh, Jon Stewart used to, or Conan O'Brien or Stephen Colbert. They all tend to live in Connecticut, which is out of New York City. But it's still a reasonable drive to New York City. So I, I th- wouldn't know. That's kind of where I imagine Wayne Manor to be. It's like, it can, but do you know, it's a do trek. you see what I'm saying? Like, though. I mean, it took Bruce and Selena in season one, it took them most of a day to get from Wayne Manor uh, to Gotham City, you know, just surface streets, not as the, the Mole Man okay. boroughs. Peter actually answered my question on like whatever you're dancing around over here. No, it's on its own island. They show it on episode one, season five, Matt. Thank you. And sorry for all the comments I missed. I was rambling and you all, y'all were talking. <laughs> so the tunnel plot hole. Truth. Okay. I had other things though. Right. Uh, with Barbara giving her the entire scoop about Penguin's plane because we were talking about Selena and got into the tunnel. Um, and the treasure and how they can escape. And Barbara didn't even really seem to care. Mm-hmm. Because now Barbara's like, I'm pregnant. I gotta take care of my nugget. And <laughs> yeah, I I don't I don't see that partnership That's going done. very well at That's all. That's done er, now. Well, I think well, Tabby I mean, was the connector. I mean the the Nigma Penguin Babs partnership. I wasn't there. Sorry, sorry. I'm just saying, like, I I don't see that partnership. Oh going no, very, no, that ain't that's that's, yeah. that's not happening. That's that that'll never ever happen. Um, and then sort of like Selena with Bruce. So in true Selena form, she shows up with her whip right in the nick of time to get the gun out of Jeremiah Crazy Man's hand, um, <laughs> saving Jim and Lee. And um, do, 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 do. one thing I absolutely despise, kind of, sort of, have questions about, I hate how the Ivy Seed, which, by the way, where's Ivy? We haven't seen her since the Seed. Yeah. Uh, ruined her um, Selena's relationship with Bruce. I kept putting she. I really shouldn't like using the name. Um, <laughs> I know that it works for their history and like setting up like the turbulent Selena and Bruce relationship. Yeah. But you know what? It still makes me go very sad face. We haven't seen her go cat eyes in several episodes no. either. No. Speaking um, of that seed. Let's see. And where does she go when Bruce, when Bruce takes off after Jeremiah on the way to Ace Chemical? Did she follow? Cause if she followed, she'd have been involved in that situation. I, well, I don't think she followed it them directly i'm trying to think of it's what like else she was came going in there. she took the well you want to think of what else was going on in there jim was driving yeah. a truck into the river he told lee to go warn everybody in the green zone selena just stood around going well <laughs> i do and bruce is after jeremiah um so there's that that was nice. that questions over here does barbara being pregnant mean she can't kill people anymore that's what it kind of looked like and that seems weird. I mean, mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of changes that happen when you're pregnant. Been there, done that three times. Um, <laughs> never tried to kill anybody before or after. So, uh, but I think that that's kind of what Penguin implied was that maybe, you know, it's making you a more nurturing psychopath, you know? A nurturing psychopath. A nurturing, nurturing psychopath. Yeah. It's fantastic. Uh, Bobby says, I told you we've probably seen the last of Ivy. I don't actually think we have. 
I think she's going to make at least one more appearance. Yeah. Um, mostly because I thought I saw promos of her. Yeah, I, ha- dress. I have seen, uh, I, I, th- I believe it was a promo picture released by Fox for one episode that had her in a slightly different dress. <laughs> a than slightly she's different in. dress of weeds. <laughs> so there we go. So now that I, I'm really rambly tonight, I apologize. It's fine. Like, Just really, take a minute. Like, hyped up. No, Breathe. I'm like all hyped up. Have a and grilled I'll... cheese sandwich. Yes, please. <laughs> you want to make me a grilled cheese? Guess what? What? It's time to light the night. Oh, no. We're gonna light the night. We're gonna light it right. Light, yes, light the night. In our new reoccurring for the next uh, what four or five, six five, weeks five now. Five episodes. Uh, we shine a light on our pivotal on the pivotal steps on Bruce's path to becoming the Bat. Anne Marie, what are we shining a light on tonight? Tired and overworked Batman slash Joker taking advantage of him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I wanted to point out, uh, and you know, we've seen this in Gotham before. I we believe that the one bad day episode, I think it was, uh, where day. Jerome and Bruce face off. But uh, there, there's a common trope in the comics and uh, even in things like Nightfall with Bane where villains try and get Batman, you know, push him to his limit Mm -hmm. you know he's up several days solving a case fighting these people he's exhausted and then you really drop the bomb on him and that's what jeremiah did here like i I don't think that bruce would have went along with jeremiah as much as he did if it wasn't for the fact that he was so exhausted at the beginning of the episode Well, and there's a reason that uh jeremiah waited that many days before after taking out i found it really weird a little weird that he just suddenly was going down the alley. Mm-hmm. He was told to go rest. I'm pretty sure he wasn't sent back to the apartment. Well, like, ba- Batman doesn't listen. Yeah, Batman doesn't listen. Although I, I did think it was kind of cool to see that overworked uh, overworked aspect of Bruce in this episode. After a couple episodes ago, Harvey kind of gave him that lesson. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you're going to have to work yourself into the ground and all this stuff. And then we see Bruce actually doing Do that just yeah. a couple episodes later. Yeah. Um, Soledad says, Jeremiah looks like he's never had a grilled cheese before. <laughs> and Peter Bryce says, um, at the, right at the, fin- Oh, uh, about, um, girl, I was just talking about poison Ivy, poison Ivy, uh, most likely won't see her till the finale and can't wait for fat penguin truth. Very true. Very true. Robin Lord Taylor in a fat suit. I'm there. Yeah, I'm, I'm here for it. That is the can- I am here for canonical it. penguin. Once it happens. The what? Canonical. Big words. Part of canon. Um, oh. Rabbinical. I uh, know. What? I remember I was going to try and yes, rhyme yes. chemical with rabbinical, but yeah, I couldn't well, figure out a good reason to put rabbinical in the no rhyme. Reason. Continue. <laughs> Okay, uh, real quick, we're going to take a quick break here, but we wanted to remind you guys about our YouTube channel over at youtube.universebox.com. Right now, it's just basically the Legends of Gotham episodes going up there, but whatever we end up doing next is going to land over there. So we suggest you go over there, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up button, uh, leave a comment. Like, subscribe. I I think I got everything. Whatever whatever all those real YouTubers (laughs) say, do that. Yeah, it's uh, youtube.universebox.com. Go check it out. One of those things that we'll be continuing on this year is The Fakest, and we have a trailer to play for you, so I'm going to play it right now. In this crazy, mixed-up world, you need fake news you can depend on. Fake on. Count on. Laugh at. When news is breaking, it's probably the fakest. <laughs> it's probably the fakest that's breaking it. That's me. I'm Paul Defoe. We've got a commercial, Paul. Breaking the fake news for real. From KCOM Studios in somewhere west of New York City, this is The Fakest. Only one podcast is on it. On the scene, making it up, breaking the fake news for real. With more reporters covering more fake stories. Coming June 18th to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Google Podcasts, and Voice Facts. I can also email you the transcript if you want. Check us out at thefakest.com and subscribe in Apple Podcasts for a new thrilling episode every two weeks. Pretty timely. The Fakest. We fake it when we make it. And that is The Fakest. You can check it out at thefakest.com or Apple Podcasts. Just search for The Fakest. It's sketch comedy uh, set in a news format. A lot of people you know and love, like me 
Anne Marie, Bobby in the chat room, Peter Price in the chat room, Rebecca Johnson from Supergirl Radio, Derek and John from Gotham TV podcast are all involved in it, playing great characters. Uh, We're getting ready right now, ramping up for season two. I'm going to be sending out the script for episode two in a couple days. He's been saying that for the last three episodes, but he's legit onto editing now. Three episodes ago, I said I was going to be sending out the first episode thing <laughs> last week i was like hey i'm gonna start editing the first episode now i'm sending out the second script it's a process there's a lot to go along <laughs> with it writing and all that stuff but the fakest.com if you like comedy and you're not offended by curse words like ass uh then definitely jada check it out it okay. jada made it okay for sure for sure <laughs> okay now i wanted to talk a little bit probably the biggest most dramatic moment of this episode the one with the most sort of stain power was the destruction of wayne manor uh, now, now Jeremiah blowing up Wayne Manor, it, it, it seemed a little out of place to me. Uh, from a story perspective, I suppose it was meant to show that Jeremiah didn't just want to emulate the worst day in Bruce's life. He wanted to match it and exceed it, mm-hmm. destroying the one place Bruce has that still holds any happy memories of the uh, days before his parents were killed. Uh, not only did Jerome taint those memories by inserting himself into them, But he also destroyed the building where they happen so Bruce can never sort of rebuild his positive associations with his home. Very, very sad, sick, twisted, wonderful plot by Jeremiah. Terrible. But I got a lot of meringues. Yes, yes. A lot of meringue. But I just kind of wonder where this is going to lead us down the line. Uh, Or they go, because, you know, Gotham is such a mishmash of so many different versions of the story. I'm wondering if they're going to go a Batman v Superman route and have him you know, in a different facility away from Wayne Manor uh, oh. where he operates as Batman and lives as Bruce Wayne. You know, that glass house that Ben Affleck lived in, uh, drug tires around the basement. Um, you know, I, so I'm wondering if they might go that route, but my hope is that they will rebuild the manor. Ju- oh, go ahead. Three comments in a row. Not a good move. No reason for blowing it up. This was not necessary. Yeah. Agreed. Which is... It, in, in but a it certain makes it actually more interesting. Yeah, because... I don't think it was necessary, but I think, what are they going to do now? Yeah, it's something you, you would never think they would do, and then they go and do it, so now you're like, ah! And it, yes. It, and the reason it probably bothers us all as fans is because it, it is important. It, yeah. it was a very dramatic thing for Jeremiah to do, which will have repercussions going forward. Yeah. So as long as they don't just like, oh, uh, Bruce fixed it with magic. You know, because <laughs> Bruce can do magic now. Um, but my hope is that at the end of the day, something like that, that they're going to rebuild the manor. That's what I was thinking. Of, uh, they'll rebuild an exact replica. Yeah, just as it was. Uh, but maybe with some additional construction in the tunnel, Jeremiah. Specifically Doug. in the tunnel. The Batcave. Uh, you know, in some versions of the story, too, uh, speaking of that tunnel, uh, Batman has a tunnel running from the Batcave straight into the heart of Gotham City. Oh. So he can, So he can get there really quickly and take care of business without putting his secret identity at risk or dealing with traffic or cops or what have you. Uh, So I'm wondering, you know, if this tunnel remains, if that'll end up being the tunnel that he uses to get down to Gotham City very quickly from Wayne Manor. And if it is, I do think it's kind of weird that Jeremiah knows about it. Catwoman knows about it. Penguin knows about it. And uh, yeah. How does Penguin know about it? Because he was there, he came there with Selena, and Alfred told him that it, the tunnel led to Bru- Wayne Manor, but it's gone now, so don't bother going down the tunnel. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah, so I, I, I just think it's going to be fun that, you know, it's a super secret tunnel that he uses to protect his secret identity, yet three of his supervillains kind of technically know about it. Yeah, there's that. But yeah, it, 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 that's it, always been the interesting part with how close him and Selena have been. You know, mm-hmm. Selena lived there. Yeah. Like, and you know, how do you hide all that? <laughs> um, see, Peter points out that the manor was destroyed countless times over the years. Just think that this was some bad writing. It's a lot of hubbub. And- yeah. Yeah. Like I said, this was a very divisive episode. And I think it's just mainly because people had so much hope in this episode. Like, we this was some, like well, not the cultivation of years, really. Not even this episode. Like, Jennifer um, points out, you know, they only had 12 episodes. Yeah. And it feels like they've wasted a significant amount of time. Mm-hmm. And I agree. Yeah. I, I mean, good things have happened, but then there's also been some not so good things. Well, what do, what do you think uh, would would have been good to cut? Like, uh, I think we can pro- all probably agree. Well, we don't know how it turns out yet, but Bane would probably be okay to cut. 
Probably. Because bringing I think, in new characters and stuff like that. Yeah, there like was that, really no need. Especially big iconic characters like Tony. I think Right. I think if you can't do it justice, you don't do it justice. I think the fact that we have the hanging um, Walker character, Amanda Walker, yeah. somewhere in this town uh-huh. um, is frustrating and annoying. Yeah. And they're going to obviously have to come back to it because it's um, it's like the gun in the drawer. Uh-huh. You have Check to off's gun. It. Yes. Yeah. I was like, I can't remember the exact person. So <laughs> check off's gun. Once it's there, something has to happen. Mm-hmm. It has to happen. Like if I have a wine glass sitting here, I have to take a drink from it because otherwise it's just sitting there and that's yeah. not okay. And, and I, I would say to probably the pregnancy storyline. I mm-hmm. mean, it's inevitable. It had to happen. It did have to happen. I feel like the, the moment we got uh, Jim, I'm pregnant. A uh, moment we got a couple episodes to go. I think that would have been better to do at the end of the last episode before the 10 year time jump. Um, I could even take it back one. Yes. Magpie would have been fine to be cut completely. And I think <laughs> we said that last week too, even though we yeah. liked her, she wasn't necessary. Um, they showed us too much in the trailers and there weren't enough surprises. Yeah. Pretty much. Especially for this episode. Yeah. So sorry. Where were we? Okay. It's up on, oh, it's on to you. It's yes. on to me. See how well I follow along. All right. This episode caused me to remember how close Gotham is to all these cities on the other side of the of the river. Um, the boats, like I mentioned earlier, like really they would have tried that at least a few other times because they have ports. They have, you know, if you have that much, if you're surrounded by river, you're going you have a lot of boats. Um, they get word that the reunification isn't happening pretty much instantly. Yeah. Like the truck goes in the river, <laughs> the reunification's off. Like, that quick. Um, because of the chemicals exploding in the river. Um, I want to know a little bit more about the surveillance that the government has on Gotham. Are there cameras somehow planted in the city? Are the cities surrounding them? Just they all have, like, super-powered um, cameras pointed at the town. Well, you know, it's it's also possible that, you know... Uh, whoever was getting, you know, Walker information is still there kind of feeding information. And, you know, I'm not completely convinced that the government guy who was like, yeah, Walker, she sucked. Don't worry about her. She's not with us at all. She's totally with them. Like I was going to say, like, I, I'm not completely convinced that he's not still involved with that whole plot somewhere. Right. Um, so do they have spies planted? Similar thing. How did they get there? Related. How did Eduardo's crew and then Walker suddenly magically get into Gotham? I don't know. Yeah. Um, going over here, Bane in the room. Okay, when they decide to do no man's land, I feel ah, I'll come back to you. <laughs> um, Bobby says he feels like the pregnancy was necessary. Yes. I also don't think it's eaten up too much screen. No, time. I don't think the pregnancy has. I I think specifically in this episode, it ate up too much screen time. Probably could have cut about a minute or two, not yeah. a lot. It was like again, seventeen people asked her if she was pregnant yeah. <laughs> of the entire episode. Yes, but with. At the end, that was good. Yeah. Oh, my God, you're pregnant. <laughs> How? How could you possibly know? You're glowing. And, of course, it was Ed. Um, Sherlock Ed. Let's see. Is Bloodhaven one of the towns on the other side of the river? I believe we've already heard that, so yes. Uh, Penguin was like a raptor in Jurassic Park looking for wheat spots in the fence. Truth. Mm-hmm. Truth. Um, I know Ed is smart, but how is he going to build a submarine? I Magic. I can't wait to see him and Penguin in a submarine, though. If they get it. We all live in a Gotham, Gotham submarine. <laughs> what? <laughs> Not planned. Not planned. <laughs> Not um, planned at all. How do we get to the opening scene from here? How do they get tanks and the such into Gotham? I have so many questions. Literally. So many questions. <laughs> They've cut them off. Mm-hmm. Why are they fighting them? Just ignore them. If you want them to die out, they'll die out. Yeah. They have no food. Well, I Ivy's guess, the only one who can make it. I guess grow. It, it really all depends on who's attacking them there at the end. Is it Eduardo and his his gang? Is it? No, a, it doesn't matter. They still had tanks. Yeah. In Gotham, mm-hmm. how did they get them there? They put them in a submarine. No, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. I don't know. I wish I had gotten a job writing at Gotham a few years ago, and then I could tell you because I. No, I you couldn't tell it. me because you'd be under an NDA. <laughs> Anyway, quibbles and nice. bits. Quibbles and bits. Yes, uh, these are points that we have written down while we were watching the episode. We Your didn't quibbles feel quibbles and bits are as long as a point. 
But uh, it, we, we didn't feel like they deserved a whole big point discussion thing, but we figured we'd share them anyway. Okay, so uh, my first quibble, uh, or you could call it yeah, a bit if you want quibbles, to. Yeah, mine can be bits. Okay, uh, my first quibble. I loved how most of the plot lines came together to serve Jeremiah's storyline in this episode, but the Stabby Babs Lee plot fell out, felt out of place. I would have preferred a lot more Jeremiah Bruce action. Agreed. Uh, my first bit, I don't understand how this could happen. Bruce. Really, man, you don't know how something could have happened to Alfred. Uh, <laughs> this is Gotham in the middle of no man's land. Yeah. Just well, Alfred is a pretty tough cookie, though. Alfred is a pretty tough cookie, but he doesn't understand how this could happen. <laughs> Where has he been for four months? Very true. Very true. Okay, now the wall markings Jim and Lee used to find that gain reminded me of an infographic I saw earlier this week about hobo code, which is basically code hobos would they'd have chalk and they'd leave marks around a town to kind of point out where the houses that would give you food are or where you can take a <laughs> bath or where you can sleep without a policeman bothering you. So I I, I wonder if the writers were kind of inspired by hobo code, but you know, I, I think the games using, you know, these chalk marks on walls to, you know, point in different directions and things makes a lot of sense in a situation like no man's land. The entire chat room has given me like seven different ways that how the tanks could get there. Can you not just be frustrated <laughs> with me? Everyone do not point out the technicality. <laughs> and Lucia no, my Pasqua fairies is not the answer because there are landmines in the water here. I, I'll give you an answer that'll satisfy you. Lucius builds them. See that I'm okay with. Yeah. See. Um, help me get to the green zone. Of course, it's that way. <laughs> really, that was fun. That was great. Okay, I thought it was interesting that uh, it's very apparent now that Alfred has complete faith in Bruce and his ability. Mm -hmm. uh, he sends him after Jeremiah alone without a second's hesitation. Where before he'd be like, Master B, you know, maybe go get Jim or. Bubbly whatnot tea. Uh, <laughs> bubbly whatnot tea. Bubbly whatnot tea. I do love bubbly. But tea. I just thought it was nice to see that that strength of faith that Alfred has in Bruce now. That's true. That's true. Uh, la, 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 la. The bombs are cakes. Really? The bombs <laughs> are cakes? Look, you brought a cake. Oh, is it Italian meringue? It was nice. It was, it was beautiful. You could tell Sh Sean Pertwee really loved chewing up the scenery with that, you know, hypnotized oh, Alfred yes. performance. And I love that. I love how all of them, the second they come out of it, they're like, we remember everything. <laughs> we're sorry. We know. Let's get moving. We were awful. We were cursed. And this line Jeremiah had that was like, uh, we have Jim here, practically your father figure, uh, and Lee, his ex-girlfriend, and somebody you've talked to once or twice. Yeah, I, your good, 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 good friend, Lee Thompson. I really love Jeremiah swapping out the fake... Uh, Wayne parents with uh, Lee and Jim I to kind that. of raise the stakes, but the stakes were really mostly raised because of Jim. Like, and it, it, Lee was just kind of like an afterthought, like, oh yeah, and th this chick too. You remember her? Yeah, uh, yeah, going. she might die too or whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, I, I think the way to solve that is they probably should have. There's been one or two little moments between Lee and Bruce throughout the entire series. Maybe they should have had a few more of those moments. A few more would have been nice. Yeah, it would have kind of built that up a little bit more. Oh, look, he's swimming to shore. <laughs> <laughs> Can Pe you not tell that I really, really enjoyed that scene? Pengu like Penguin was so excited about oh, that, too. Oh, look, he's swimming to shore. Okay, anything, oh. anything fun from the chat room? Um, Alfred sending Bruce alone after Jeremiah seemed weird to me, and then we're, we're still at yeah, I, I would, I, I would say uh, definitely weird in the context of the entire series, but coming where it does in the it's series, grown. yeah, it feels like growth to me. Feels, feels like growth. Like growth okay, uh, now it's time for our arbitrary scale where I pick a random number and a random object completely off the top of my head, and completely I don't write it down paper. on this page at all. Completely on the paper. And uh, then we rate the episode by that scale. Okay, so <laughs> and and you guys can feel free to weigh yes, in over please. in the comments I'll try too. And keep track. Okay, Anne-Marie, out of four grilled cheese and Branston pickle sandwiches, how many grilled cheese and Branston pickle sandwiches do you give this episode? My expectations were set too high. I'm only giving it one and three quarters pickle. One grilled and cheese three and quarters. Yeah. Wow. That's a pretty low amount of grilled cheese and Branston. My expectations for the this episode were through the roof. And, uh -huh. you know, beating the dead horse. They really did give us all the all the goods. Yeah. In all the previews. Mm -hmm. Like, and the fact that they gave us so much in the previews is what made my expectations be huge. Yeah. 
Like yeah. they were huge. I wanted like half of the episode to be at Ace Chemicals. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd have liked to have seen them fishing him out. I think that would have been way more interesting than half of the crap we got. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I agree. There's that. Okay. Two and a half sandwiches from Bobby, but no pickles. He hates pickles. Truth. <laughs> uh, Meg Pasqua, two and three quarters. I am, you know, alone in my principles in the lowland. Um, what you got? I got uh as for me, I'm gonna get I'm gonna give it two uh grilled cheese and Branston pickle sandwiches out of four. Uh, cause you know, if there was a fan edit that existed of just the, the Jeremiah Bruce stuff for grilled cheese sandwich, grilled okay. cheese, Branston pickle sandwiches, no problem. Absolutely no problem. But I think, I think the episode suffered in pacing because they kept cutting to these other things, mainly the Lee Barbara pregnancy C Thing. plot. Yeah. Uh, it, it could have been better. It could have been better. Could have been better with cheddar Don't on that me, grilled cheese sandwich. Um, anything else from the? I know. Maybe. Hold on. It's suddenly. Oh, four. Okay. Uh, Peter Price gives it three. Fair enough. Fair Sorry, enough. My computer decided to go to a whole different view when I clicked something. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I was like, this is not how we've been doing the comments all night. Okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move on now to a little section we call feedback. Now, every week when you get done watching the show, uh, well, you know what? Last week we put out this super big call to action. We want all the feedback in the world. We got about the average amount. So what I'm, I'm going to try the opposite this week. Whatever you do, we don't want to hear from you after you finish watching the next Nothing. episode, no contact at all. I mean, for your information, FY information, our email address is legendsofgotham at gmail.com. The voicemail number is 424-274-2352. Again, that's 424-274-2352. Uh, the Twitter's at Legends of Gotham, and the Facebook is facebook.com slash Legends of Gotham. But don't get a hold of we us. Don't we don't want to hear from you at all. If we hear from you, we will read it on the air. Be really happy. Um, okay. Solo Dad gave it 2.75 sandwiches. 2.75 sandwiches. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to start with voicemail like we normally do. And as usual, we're going to start with Bobby's voicemail. Take it away, Bobby. Hey, guys, it's Bobby here. So hey. I guess this is the episode that everyone's been waiting for since the show started. If not, at the very least, the introduction of the Jerome character. Um, I do not know how I felt about the Jerome, Jeremiah, Joker, you know, not Joker character of this show. Um, convoluted. There, are, there are elements that I like, elements that I don't like. But I will say that with this week's episode, I mean, come on, it, there's no denying that this is the Joker. I mean, the plan that he put into, uh, set into motion in tonight's episode is straight up a Joker story. I don't know that I've ever actually seen it in a comic book, but it, 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 you know, it, it would definitely fit right in. And <laughs> there were things that were like, he said in this episode that I'm pretty sure actually were straight out of a comic book. Oh yeah. Like when he said, uh, without me, you're just a joke without a punchline. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure the Joker has said that to Batman, but if he hasn't, he should DC comics should totally steal that line from Gotham. Cause that was a really solid. They might've fed it to them enough of one that got like cut. As we've said in the past, you know, like this is its own world. This is Gotham. It's Earthy. influenced heavily by like anything and everything of the Batman mythos. I just really hope that by the end of this, they actually let them just call him Joker. It's like they've taken all elements of the Joker from all, you know, forms of media, video games, TV shows, comic books, movies, and they've put it all together into Christmas song parodies. One cohesive whole that actually makes sense. I th Cameron Monaghan can go down as one of the greatest performances of the Joker and I have no qualms with that. And his story is not over yet. There were a few Easter eggs I think I caught. As we've noticed in the past, the show is heavily influenced by the 89 Tim Burton uh, Batman. And, you know, that Ace Chemicals warehouse, I mean, looked like it was straight out of the Burton Burton uh, movie. And maybe I'm wrong, but at the 35 the minute looked, and 35 seconds. Ah! I was going to say, even the CGI looked like it was from 1989. Right, right after Jeremiah has fallen into the, his acid bath and uh gordon has driven the car of chemicals into the river when he's looking down at the river and the river turns green and whatnot i'm pretty sure like embedded in the score it was almost like there was the laugh track the laugh box thing going off it was like you know from the 89 batman when jack nicholson dies and it nice. pains it on him going on the on the ground and he's just like ha 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 ha
yeah so i'm pretty sure in the score of tonight's so. episode at that 35 minute 35 second episode mark there was like if not a laugh you know like a the, a percussion that definitely was meant to bring to mind that laugh box. Just an idea I had also are these tunnels that Jeremiah is digging underneath or dug mm -hmm. underneath Gotham to get to uh, Wayne Manor. I wonder if that is like the what will be the basis that Bruce uses for uh, the Batcave going forward. Get out of my head, Bobby. Once he rebuilds Wayne Manor. And of course, the reunion between Ed and Nick. Uh, I always do that Ed Enigma when I'm talking about Penguin. <laughs> uh, between Ed and Oswald and, uh, you know, the breakup between Catwoman or Pat Girl, Cat Girl and Oswald and Lee and the uh, the reunion, I guess, of Lee and Jim at the end, you know, all that was all, you know, that. But let's be honest, the, this episode was called Ace Chemicals for a reason. As we move closer <laughs> and closer to the finish line, the show just keeps impressing me more and more. Fifth season, of obviously, easily being my favorite of the of the bunch nice so out of 43 pearls on martha wayne's necklace nice. i'm gonna give this week's episode 38 not my favorite of the bunch so far but it definitely brought us a some key elements in the batman mythos very nice. And uh, Bobby adds in the chat room, you know, he might have sounded a little critical about the episode, but he says in the chat room, you know, it was still pretty Gouda. Uh, you know, like the grilled cheese stuff. There's a reason I was letting that sit there. All right. Next up is Peter <laughs> Price. Take it away. Hey, guys. This is uh, Peter Price here. Hey. Calling in uh, as myself this time. No voiceover. Sorry, Weird. guys. I really wanted to call in because, unfortunately, I want to be a little serious about this. Ace Chemical. Uh, uh, it was a good good episode it was borderline great it was not jaw dropping spectacular and unfortunately a episode like this which is so iconic to the batman series should be exactly that mm -hmm. yeah. mind-blowingly spectacular and i have to admit it's just it's the first time that gotham has ever truly disappointed me and Aww. that's really hard to say because i've loved every episode from the pilot all the way till now and it was really hard for me to put my finger on exactly what it was about this episode that really left me with a, a bit of a sour taste in my mouth at the end. And I, and I, I think I finally clued it down to what it is. Gotham has always had the shock factor. It is mm -hmm. the one show out there that no matter what, they've always been able to awe you, drop your jaw and go, what did they just do? <laughs> I can't believe they just did that. Yeah. And that's amazing. That's wonderful. That's that's what makes the show so great. But the problem is, is that I I think it's because the producers himself spoiled this this particular episode mm -hmm. so much leading up to it. And it's not to say that they haven't given a lot away, uh, especially with the second half of season four. There was so many promo and fan trailers, and I'll get to that in just one second. I, I will say I, I I definitely agree with your points here, uh, Peter. I, I I think there was this expectation from the fans based on the Jerome White Band trailer that there would be a mega big you know trailer for this episode in particular. I know uh, we're actually friends with uh, the guy who cuts those trailers on Twitter, uh, Jonks Productions. And I saw a lot of people contacting him, like putting pressure on him to get this uh, this trailer out there. Yeah. And so maybe maybe at the end of the day, you didn't want to disappoint. He over delivered a little bit because, yeah, you're right. I, yeah, but didn't it still have to go like the producers and stuff still had to be like, yeah, put that out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think almost calling it Ace Chemicals gave it away too much. Like, uh -huh. even I don't think they necessarily needed to go that far. <laughs> mm hmm leave a little to the imagination y'all like yeah. wouldn't it i think it would have been better if we wouldn't have known like any of it maybe if we'd have known like the whole like um thomas and martha wayne thing that's cool mm -hmm. let's do that have it be a complete shock that they go to ace chemicals yeah like this could have been like the pearl necklace mm -hmm. it could have easily been the pearl necklace yeah. as like an episode title and uh -huh. i think that might have you know, made it a little bit more. And obviously like the trailer give, gave all the good stuff away. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that gave so much away because they wanted more audience to come in in hopes of renewing another season. 
well, this is their last season. There's no renewal that was going to happen. Right. So you should have went full out. And they did. But the problem is, is with the last band trailer, and I know I probably you could have just said, don't watch it. Just wait till this the episode comes on. But it's then? hard when it's a trailer being promoted by the show itself. Mm-hmm. And it gave you so much of the material in this particular episode that you pretty much saw the episode before even seeing it. Mm-hmm. You know, without physically seeing him fall into the vat, which was amazing watching Jeremiah put himself into the vat, which again was a wonderful, wonderful throwback to the old Batman series where he would let the criminals. I think it was also a good throwback to Jerome dying. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Cause he fell he just fell like that. Just yeah. like that. Hurt or maim or even fatally dispose of themselves without physically doing it <laughs> himself well you went to hit me oh you fell off the roof you died oh sorry i didn't do it you did it to yourself sorry i, I let you fall though so, <laughs> great throwback to the golden age batman speaking of the golden age really quickly jeremiah is definitely my favorite rendition of cameron's portrayal of the two mm-hmm. mainly because i i favor the golden age joke um a, a criminal of few words with a sadistic smile, sadistic plan behind him. So I know a lot of more people loved Jerome better, but my vote's always... Anyway. I I, I would say... Uh, what, what do you say, Anne-Marie? I, I would say I like Jeremiah better than Jerome. Like, Ooh. in a lot of ways, Jerome felt to me like a later stage Joker. Uh, you, you know, know with, I don't even know which... With yeah. the face being ripped off and be like sort of the Arkham Asylum Joker, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Jeremiah, he, he's just classy. It's just classy. Uh, I just want to end with saying, you know, there were so many times that they they dropped our jaws in the past, even going all the way back to season one when Penguin came out and started walking up the hill and revealed that he's been a, uh, an informant for Falcone the whole time yes. and he's been oh, playing both yeah. sides. There was oh, nothing in the, in the trailers leading up to it, the promos, anything that even gave you a hint that that spoiler was coming when Penguin killed Martine, supposedly. In the yes. car, uh, there was never any shots of Martine between uh, Sophia and and Penguin in their their standoff uh, leading up to the episode. You you only got to see these great things inside the episode. Unfortunately, they showed us so much of what was <laughs> going to happen between Bruce and Jeremiah that, for me personally, it ruined the episode. So sorry, maybe it's just I'm holding this episode to such a higher standard. But, exactly. Um, yeah. <clears throat> on the arbitrary scale which I'm not even going to guess what you're going to do with that, Bill, because <laughs> that's another shock factor for your show. <laughs> what is Bill going to choose today? I don't know. Whatever verifies as a 75, that's what I'm going to go with, because though it was a great plot, fairly good writing, I really would have wished they had had prior episodes being Bruce pursuing Jeremiah. Mm-hmm. And of course, yeah, I know they had to have Bruce there to help them get the word to the mainland. There could have been a conflict where he was like, I have to drop my obsession with Jeremiah to go help out Gordon and then I'm back onto it, you know, and a lead up to Ace Chemicals as yeah. opposed to putting it all in one episode and finding it down and giving us a very small combative scene between Jeremiah and Bruce really felt sped up. But uh, mm-hmm. so the writing fair plot, fantastic execution. So <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, Bill and Marie, you guys are great. Love legends of Gotham. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for coming back for one last season, the last season um can't wait to see the last few episodes of both gotham and you guys thank you take care thank Bye. you thank you very much as always so over in the chat there's well comments chat i'm still not used to that um there was multiple people who were like didn't even watch trailers and were still disappointed, still disappointed. it just was too fast i think it was yeah. just completely too fast uh la 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 or even like some people didn't even see like promo pictures and stuff and we're still disappointed see bobby says with the joker storyline um, while they have changed quite a bit, I feel like there were certain elements that had to be included. The only element of that part of the story that would be somewhat surprising are the Wayne parent doppelgangers. With that said, I really don't think there was much in the trailer spoiled that I didn't that I couldn't have already expected. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think I mean, that, it was all guess. I just it felt rushed. I think the only moment from the trailer that I kind of wish I hadn't had spoiled for me, but I love seeing it in the trailer was the the whole Zorro. Uh, right. Moment. I think that would have been a great, yeah. great reveal. Yeah. 
especially since it was like right up in the front of the episode. Done. So you You'd were just been like, been like what? Yeah. What? Z's. Okay. We have a letter from Mark here. Mark says, hi, Bill and Emery. Long time uh, writer, caller, first time listener here. That's interesting. Uh, you asked for reactions to Ace Chemicals and mine are, uh, one, you could not ask for anyone to be more Joker than Jeremiah was in this episode and by extension, Cameron. True. He has been old school golden age Joker since that Jack in the Box gassed him, and I I am loving it. Yes. Uh, and then two, maybe Selena truly didn't care as she sat on the fire escape watching Bruce cry as his parents bled out. <laughs> Sorry, it's been about three years. Oh, it's okay. But at the very least, uh, she has spent every moment since then caring about the ideas, uh, caring about the idea that she didn't care then. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has been torn between the invulnerability she needs to wrap herself in to survive on the streets of Gotham and the vulnerability inherent in loving somebody, uh, namely Bruce, for ages now. And while we've known that since the beginning how it's going to end, there's still an element of tragedy to it. Yes. It has been a magnificent experience watching David and Cameron grow up together in these roles like a Vertigo version of Kevin Arnold and Winnie Cooper. <laughs> And I am truly going to miss them. I love that, uh, by beautiful. the way. Best regards, Mark. Thank uh, th- you, Mark. That was beautiful. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, Nico uh, at Cobble Potteries over on one. Twitter. Okay, go ahead. Um, I seem to recall when Oswald wrote into the Oswald. Legends of D- Gotham podcast. Quotes. Anne-Marie said something the likes of, he has an answer for everything. I was tickled when Ed said something similar in the latest episode of Gotham. You folks called Oswald alt on it first. Anne Marie was right. Anne Marie was right. The one time, I mean, it had to happen. I eventually. think that's at least twice this episode. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, but uh, also, uh, Cobble Here's Potteries uh, said in a follow up tweet to this that. Uh, not sure why Oswald hasn't been writing in, but maybe towards the end of the season. Although I don't know how Cobble Potteries would know the Penguins' uh, letter writing schedule. Cousins. For... Cousins. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, last but not least, over on YouTube, uh, in reference to last week's episode, which we called Batgirl's Batgirl Begins, <laughs> Rogue Vortex said, great title. Oh, thank you, Rogue. Uh, thank you very much. We actually we were going to do it the week before. But we weren't sure if the pregnancy thing was going to come in or not. So I'm glad we saved I'm it. I'm glad we waited. I'm yeah. glad we waited. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Uh, anything else over in the chat room? Nope. That's about it for okay. now. Well, again, uh, guys, when you get done Thank watching you. Gotham this Thursday. Don't send us a thing. Yeah. Do not contact us in any way at legendsofgotham at gmail.com. Don't leave a voicemail. 424-274-2352. <laughs> again, that's 424-274-2352. But you don't need that. For goodness sake, do not tweet us on Twitter <laughs> at Legends of Gotham. And whatever you do, don't join us here 9 p.m. EST next Sunday night at Facebook.com slash Legends of Gotham. Uh, now we're Anne-Marie. Where can people find you online? Oh, I'm all over the place. How about I'm on Twitter at AMD Simone or on Instagram at UB Anne Marie. And as for me, on you can follow me on Twitter at Bill Meeks. Uh, you can follow all of the stuff I do soon at billmeeks.com. I think I'm going to have it launched this week, actually. It's a good site. And, uh, you know, Marchish March is or something, we're starting back up with season two of The Fakest, so go over to thefakest.com or search Apple Podcasts for The Fakest to subscribe and get on all, all that fun. I will say that the season premiere of The Fakest does have a Batman sketch, and I'm also lying about it. All right. It's just like you said it should. It doesn't, though. <laughs> now, again, we want to thank you guys so much for thank joining you, us thank tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It has been awesome. It has been fun. It has been fantastically awesome. And we're going to head out now. So join us next time for more Legends, Legends of, of Gotham. Gotham. Covina, Why? California. I don't know. I have it stuck in my head for some reason. Probably because of the crazy ex. Yeah, thing. I'm sure. Wow. Until who knows? They really gave it. West Covina, California.